Thank you for tuning in to the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast. Be sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment on a future guest that you would like to see, and enjoy the show. This is Nona. I'm Andrew. And we are joined with world-famous actor and comedian, Anthony Anderson. (laughs) We're actually joined with somebody cooler than... Actor Anthony, in my opinion. I mean, Anthony Anderson is a pretty funny guy. Yeah. But definitely stories that you see on Twitter that involve this Anthony Anderson, there's the lore, the story, the plot build out, how it all unfolds. Like you really cannot script it. It's amazing. Wow. Oh, by the way, you are <laughs> invested. Yeah. Okay. By the way, I didn't even introduce you guys. Anthony, this is Nona. Nona, Anthony. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, um, man, I, I think I followed you early. I my my account that I use right now was my business account formerly, and I don't remember even. It was about two years ago. I was working at DJM for Nick, and I had disabled, fucked up, couldn't get my original account back, and so I started using my business account as my personal account. And just started following people and you know things like that and i just remember seeing you pop up as following me and i was like oh fuck <laughs> is this guy after me for something <laughs> i love that story yeah so um was that some butt puckering yeah yeah <laughs> oh my God. As, soon as, as soon as you see that stolen valor is following you you're like oh, oh shit, shit. Yeah, what, did I do? what did i do let me, what did I say? Let me go back through all of my so tweets how did you find him <laughs> How did you find him? Um, honestly, I don't know. Um, I, I try to I try to follow you know different accounts. Um, it may have been. Are, are were you affili- affiliated with Black Rifle at any time? Uh, well, they follow me. I've never um, been an employer or anything, but I know all the guys. I mean, okay. Um, yeah. I can't really remember. Um, I, I could have followed you for different reasons i mean i follow a lot of military accounts a lot of just you know uh veterans so whatever the ones that trip me up are the people that follow me and never engage with me i'm like first of all how did you find me silent creepers and why yeah but there are people that like i see their content and i'm like okay and i engage and i'll respond or react periodically and they just don't at all with mine so it makes me wonder two things am i i don't don't want to call it shadow ban because that's there's like there's certain ratios of how popular your account is and how frequently the algorithm wants to show it. Right. Like, am I just not cool enough to be surfaced to somebody with a bigger account or are they just following people to get the follow back? You know what I mean? Yeah. No. Yeah. But with that being said, who is your favorite follow on Twitter? My favorite follow? Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna have to go with Chuck Ritter, man, and and, and not because he's just you know he, he's a he's a good guy and you know, um, man, he's a master troll. Well, well, I mean, I haven't known Chuck long. Um, we met through, of course, the debacle with him. Um, you know, being falsely accused of some things, and he came to me. I didn't, I didn't even know who he was. He came to me one day in my inbox and was like, "Hey, dude, um, you know, I know who you are. I, I know your background." He's like, and he asked me for a favor. He said, "Can you?" You know, can you look at my case and, and you know, go over all this evidence and just, just give the public your opinion, man. Did I do this? Did I do not? Did, or did I not do this? Um, and so I, I worked his case um, and me and him became good friends after that. And um, so we kind of follow each other. Um, it, it, so he was one of my favorite. My, I think my second. I've actually got three. Chris, Chris Pronto and Dave Park. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Chris is, of course, uh, a survivor of Benghazi. Um, he's one of the. I didn't know that. Yes, yes. He he was one of the, he was the uh, one of the GRS guys that uh, okay. actually survived the the assault on Benghazi, um, and, uh, and and Dave Park. Dave Park was uh, is a, he's a former Ranger, also former GRS as well. Um, but. All three of us, we kind of we kind of interact a lot. Um, but Chuck, man, he he just turned out to be a master troll. You know, he he posts something up, man, and people just 
go crazy over it, you know. I, I feel like that really happened over the last year. It like, did. I, I don't think it was really that much earlier than like summer of 2023. Can you give a recap of the case? Yeah. Uh yeah. Um so Chuck came to me um uh probably maybe God, a year ago, a year or so ago, maybe a little longer. Um, uh, he was current active duty sergeant major um, over. He's actually the commandant of the uh, Joint Force, uh, uh, John F. Kennedy Special Warfare Center and School Special Forces. Um, he served he served 20 some odd years so far. Um, got got a Silver Star, Purple Hearts. I mean, the dude just he just he just he just can't get out of the way of a bullet, you know. But um, so so. He came to me. The, the the basic of the story was he was being accused of sleeping with one of his special for, forces soldiers' wives, um, oh. and so um, it, it it got into the tabloids because hey, command sergeant major special forces, you know it's a big thing, um, and so the tabloids picked it up and they ran with the story. Well, come to find out. After looking into it, most of the evidence that they had that proved that Chuck did what he did was actually falsified evidence. Um, the, the SF soldier that was married to the woman that he was supposedly sleeping with um, actually found out later because he actually accused Chuck as well. He said, hey, man, you know, why, why are you trying to sleep with my wife? Here's the evidence. Well, then he found out his own, that his wife had actually uh, fabricated those messages. She had fabricated a, a phone call. Between oh, really? Yeah. Um, um, the story was she had actually went to Chuck because she was claiming that this soldier was was uh, abusing her domestically. Um, and so Chuck, as a, as a commander, doing what he's supposed to do, he wants to help the soldier, the, the wife out. Well, she used that against him. Um, the, the soldier in question had already had some some bad blood with Chuck because they were on a mission in Syria and there were some things that went down in Syria and Chuck had to send him home, um, and he pulled him off mission to send him home. So there was some bad blood there to begin with. Um, and so with her doing this, it just kind of added fuel to the fire. Well, they both went to the tabloids with this evidence. The tabloids ran with it um, and just you know, almost destroyed Chuck's reputation. Um, and so he came to me, and he's like, hey, man, you know, um, you know, I know you don't know me. You, don't, uh, you know, we don't know each other. He said, I know your background. I know you're fair. He said, look at the evidence, look at what's out there, come to a conclusion. He said, and he said, and and tell the public what you what you find out. And so I did. I mean, there was a lot of evidence out there. He sent me evidence. I even talked to the soldiers involved. Um, I talked to the special forces soldier that was married to the female. And he even admitted he he did a sworn statement and said, Yeah, man, he said we it was fabricated. It was all a lie. You know, but it almost destroyed right. Riddle's reputation. I mean, I mean, this dude, this dude, you know, to me, he's a hero. He doesn't like to be called that, but to me, he's a hero. I mean, he survived, he, he survived IEDs. He survived, I think, three shots from a PKM, man, and still carried himself off the battlefield. You know, um, he's gone through two hip replacements. Um, you know, I mean, so the dude's been through the shit. Right. And to, and to have a, de a highly decorated soldier like that um, have his reputation destroyed over some lies, um, you know, like I said, yeah, I go after stolen valor. I do have to go. Out, I do go after the bad guys, but I help the good guys too. You know, he was. It wasn't stolen valor. In a way, it was the way I look at it. They were trying to steal his valor by destroying his reputation. You know, right. right. And um, once lies are out there, it's so hard to come back. Yeah, it so, is. It's hard. It's hard. If if we can uh, take a quick step back uh, for our audience, because there might be a, a probably a big portion of our audience that has no idea. One, what stolen valor really means, and two, who you are and kind of the origin of the organization in your mission to begin with. Well, stolen valor, um, technically, if you the, the the technical term is if you claim awards that you have not earned and you gain something of tangible benefit. The federal law states it has to be valor awards. It has to be. You know, your Medal of Honor, your CIB, your CAB, Purple Hearts, things like that. If you claim those awards and you get a tangible benefit, whether that be monetarily or any other benefit, then you've broken the stolen valor law, per se. Um, 
But if you ask a veteran what stolen valor is, you know, you're going to get a wide ranging view of, you know, what they think stolen valor is. Right. Um, to me, stolen valor is, you know, should be kept to what it means, you know, stealing valor, whether it be awards, you know, somebody is bring an example of um, the recent debacle with, with uh, Tim Waltz, who's running for vice president um, with his, uh, with his rank uh, misinterpretation. Um, that's not stolen valor. You know, you know, rank isn't gained by valor. So, I mean, that's, to me, that's not stolen valor. Did, did he, did he embellish by saying, you know, that he retired in sort major when he didn't? Yes, but it's still not stolen valor. Um, so, so, you know, v- veterans have a wide range of view of stolen valor, especially when they get into political debates online, man. I mean, they want to throw stolen valor out there. Like, you know, like, like, I mean, like, like nothing else. I mean, I get tagged on in every political comment, I think on Twitter. Yeah. It's, I, I was going to bring that up. Um, you know, once we kind of got to a logical point for that, but, um, really quickly, when did your account, like, I feel like it's kind of exploded in the last years. I mean, it's almost like it followed right along with Chuck's ride to be becoming a troll, but it maybe, maybe it's just because I'd been off Twitter for a while, you know, years prior and came back, but it just seems well, like the last year it's exploded. Well, my Twitter account. Yes. Um, I, I didn't really use Twitter a lot. Um, mm-hmm. I actually started this organization back in 2010, I believe. Well, um, 2010, we started on Facebook. It was, um, I got back from Afghanistan and myself and several other infantry guy, infantrymen guys wanted to get together and have a safe space where we could all come together and shoot the shit and, you know, not have nobody bother us. So we created a Facebook page pages on Facebook. It just started to become a thing. Um, so we created a page called us infantry. Um, and while I was on that page, one of my friends came to me and said, Hey man, I got this dude down here in Florida. He said, um, I'm friends with him. He's, he comes to the VFW a lot. He said, um, but his stories are really wild. He's like, he tell, he told me he got shot in the face in Afghanistan that he's got, you know, he's got plates in his face. He's like, but you know, he's, he, and he, he kind of house jumps. He, he uses that, uses his record as a hero to house jump from house to house to stay these people's houses. Um, and I said, well, that's kind of weird. You know, I said, you know, if, if he's, that badly wounded, the VA would be taking care of him. So I reached out to the guy um, and he actually sent me a copy of his DD-214. Uh, at this point, really, man, I'd been in the military for, for years, never even knew what stolen valor was. I never heard the term. Um, well, I knew what a 214 looked like. So I looked at this dude's 214 and I was like, man, I immediately started seeing red flags. You know, Block 18, for one, had um, a lot of weird stuff. One of the weirdest ones was it had it it had in there that he had 1,200 confirmed kills. And I'm like, Jesus. when did the Army, when did the army start putting 1,200 confirmed kills in Block 18? And why isn't this guy in some museum somewhere for killing 1,200 guys? You know. Yeah. Um, and, and so I started investigating him, come to find out he had lied. Also, he had t- taken that 214 and turned it into the VA, and the VA had accepted it. Um, and he was getting VA benefits based off of that DD-214 which in that in itself was illegal. Um, so I said, okay, well, how do I do this? Who do I talk to? Um, so I started doing a little research on my own. Um, I found a guy named Doug Sterner. Um, Doug Sterner is a military historian. He works for military.com. Um, he's been doing this for years. I reached out to him. Um, he put me in touch with Mary and Chuck Shentag. Um, Mary and Chuck Shentag, are, uh, they run something called the POW Network. Um, and what they did was um, they, they would go around and out fake POWs from Vietnam because there are a lot of fake POWs out there, you know, that claim they were POWs in Vietnam. And her husband had served and was wounded in Vietnam. And so they had started this organization to out fake POWs. Um, so all three of them came together and they said, hey, this is something you want to do. You know, we can teach you the ropes and show you how to do these things. Um, so they took me under their wing. Basically, I became their apprentice. Um, they introduced me to Don Shipley. Um, I'm sure you know who he is. He's mm-hmm. a guy that goes after all the fake seals. Um, so Don Shipley got in and, and they basically took me under their wing and I built a, uh, built a Facebook page, Stolen Valor. Hold um, on, pause for a second. I have a name to give you then. What's that? Go after an, a, a fake seal when we're done with this. Uh-oh. 
<laughs> Carry on. Somebody I used to nanny for a long time ago oh, wow. when I was a teenager. Wow. Yeah, there's a lot of Navy SEALs out there, man. I'm telling you. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. You, I, know, you, you know how you can tell the difference between a fake Navy SEAL and a real Navy SEAL? How's a book deal. Yeah, <laughs> I'm so sorry for interrupting you. Right. I didn't even yeah. know there was somebody who did that. So thank you. All right, carry yeah, on. Yeah. So um, yeah. So Don does Don does all my all my seals. Um, you know. Um, and so basically, I started on Facebook. That was my first my first case. Once they showed me how to request records, how to do a proper investigation, um, I posted this guy's case up on my website, um, guardianofvalor.com, um, back in 2010. Um, once I posted up on my website, I got a call from Fox News um, um, from Holly McKay. Um, she wasn't very well known then. She is now. But back then, she was fo the Fox News entertainment director, basically. Okay. Um, um, actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, that story was picked up by the FBI. The FBI saw that story on my website. They reached out and said, hey, man, can you send us your casework? You know, we're looking into this guy um, and we want to see if we can prosecute him. So I sent all that to the FBI. They investigated it. They found that they that he broke four or five different laws. I think they charged him with five different felonies. Um, he ended up getting five years in prison um, and ended up ended up paying back like two hundred eighty grand to the VA. Jesus. Um, yeah. So, so that's basically where we started. And then what launched us, I say, is is the story um, we did on American Idol back when American Idol was was a big thing. Um, there was a dude that went on American Idol. He was in the first uh, the first batch of people to be chosen. He went, he goes in front of the judges, um, Howard Stern and the other two, and um, he tells them the story of him being in our, uh, Afghanistan, that he was hit by an IED, which caused him to stutter. And the only time he didn't stutter was when he played the guitar and sang. And so, of course, that's going to get, you know, it's going to hit the judges in the heart, man. Hey, we got a wounded warrior here, man, that, you know, the only time he doesn't stutter is when he sings. So they passed him on to the next round. Well, after that happened, man, my inbox started filling up with people that served with this guy. And they were like, hey, man, this dude's a fake. You know, yeah, he was in Afghanistan, but he was never hit by an IED. You know, he, you know, he, this did not happen. So I took all their statements. I wrote a story up on him. Um, and then that's when Holly McKay from Fox News reached out. She said, hey, I'd like to do this story. Um, so Holly did the story, posted it up. Um, he got kicked off of American Idol. Um, and that's basically what's what kind of launched um, launched our organization. Um, Holly McKay has since moved on. I'm not sure if you know her, but she's a she's a very good uh, war correspondent now. She's got several books out. Um, she was actually embedded with the Peshmerga at one time um, okay. in a, in Iraq. Um, so that's basically how we started. Um, and I went. I, I, I kept going for years, and, and I got burnt out. Man, it was just, there's just so there was just so much stolen valor, so many cases and the veteran community can sometimes be, you know, at each other's throat. And I, and I was going through a medical discharge around 2016. And so it, it kind of came up, it was a little bit too much for me. So I took a break, but when I took a break, I took all my assets, like my website, my Facebook page, uh, my Twitter page. And I turned all that over to grunt style because uh, me and grunt style started at the same time. We were good friends. And Daniel told me, he said, Hey man, if you ever decide to give it up or take a break, Turn it over to me. I'll hang on to it in case you ever decide to come back because what you do is important. So I did turn it over to him. Um, and then once I got to a place where I needed to be uh, with my family and with my health, um, I decided to come back. And so I came back probably about two years ago now. Um, and that's when I realized, hey, Facebook wasn't the place anymore. X is where everybody's at. Um, and so and I already had an X account, but it just I just didn't use it much. Yeah. And so that's, that's probably why you've seen the X account kind of explode is because, you know, I just kind of moved over everything from Facebook to, to X. Yeah. Well, as we were talking with Emery earlier for, for people watching or listening to this, the last episode or the upcoming episode, one of the two, I never know what order things are going to come out. It depends on how long it takes me to put it together. Um, but f Twitter X, whatever you want to call it, it has always been very visible because kind of like Reddit as well, you know, whatever you post on there could surface right on the first page of Google search. Yeah. Right. So versus a, a Facebook group or page, a lot of times they're private or the sharing settings don't authorize, you know, search engines to index it, things like that. So it's a perfect 
platform, Reddit as well. I would fuck you probably find all kinds of people on Reddit. Probably yeah, yeah. I've actually got a Reddit. I have a Reddit um stolen valor as well. I think we had about fourteen thousand members on Reddit. The user or the subreddit? Uh subreddit, yeah. I gotta check it out because I'm on Reddit. I've got a couple yeah. accounts. <laughs> yeah, we, we got about fourteen thousand last I checked, fourteen thousand subscribers to that subreddit, I think. That's awesome. I had no idea. I don't know how I didn't know. Now we've got a YouTube channel too, but YouTube, man. I, I did know that, but YouTube keeps screwing me, man. They'll they'll they will they will monetize me, then demonetize me. They keep trying to say, Hey, you're reusing other people's content. I'm like, no, man, this is my content. People are reusing my my shit, you know. I mean for, I've heard a lot of the same stories from a lot of different people that have no, I guess I would be the connection because I know them, but um, it's the the same story kind of from every genre. Yeah. I have clients that are huge uh, YouTubers that have music channels on YouTube that have four or five million subscribers, and they'll create something fully animated, original lyrics, you know, all the instruments they play and record everything themselves. And there will be like a three second hum that just sounds similar enough to something else. And they have to go and fight it. And then they, but in the meantime, they lose all of that ad revenue for a while it was demonetized. It's kind of ridiculous that it, and I, I mean, I kind of understand why, because for a platform like YouTube, they want to cut off the bleeding as fast as possible. And then, you can prove your you can prove you're real. You can prove it's your content, whatever, and then we'll give you everything back. But I find it pretty ironic that YouTube is calling stolen valor fake yeah. when he's calling out people for being fake. <laughs> right. Well, so, a lot of, I mean, I think it's fucking ironic. So a lot of it is content ID stuff. So people will somebody somebody will start off on TikTok, for example, or maybe start off on Instagram, and then somebody sees their content and they'll go and search for them on another platform. And they're not there. And so they're like, oh, I'll be the first one to upload their content to that platform. And then when the content creator comes over, now they have to get content ID claims. It's probably what's a lot of what's happening to him, where it's just because somebody else clipped his content before he could upload his own content. Who knows? Well, uh, well, and, well and, and that's kind of the thing. You know, most of I haven't uploaded any new videos recently, except for when I was doing the Steve Slayton case. Um, and I uploaded some recordings, but most of my videos are, are older videos that were uploaded like, you know, back in the day when I originally started, like the, the one of the seal in the mall. I'm sure you've seen that. Um, you know, the uh, guy gets we'll, we'll, we'll get to that kind of stuff because I have yeah. some questions. Yeah. I mean, that was that was my video. That was my original video. In two days, it had five million views. You know, and, and so and now that I'm I came back to YouTube and I'm starting. I'm starting trying to start again because I was thinking about, you know, maybe doing some stolen by our podcasts on YouTube. Um, and they demonetized me saying I was reusing other people's content. And I was like, no, that's other people reusing my content. Look at my upload date, 2012. I mean, you know. Yeah. So I the YouTube in general, because they will retroactively hit you with things makes it a giant nightmare because you can't predict what the next policy change is going to be. So you could upload a video today, tomorrow the policy is different and Friday your channel has gone. <laughs> right. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. And I've, I've seen a lot of people moving, you know, everybody wants to start their own subscription service now and come to our platform, pepper box and stuff from the, uh, the gun tuber guys. And, um, who else has their own thing now? Basically, everybody has it in some. Yeah, and that's what Don Shipley had to do, man. I mean, he was exposing fake Navy SEALs on YouTube, um, and he was doing it. He did it for years, and all of a sudden, they demonetized him. You know, um, because they considered it harassment. I'm like, he's not harassing these guys. So, you know, he, so I, I, I know, and I understand why. I do have a little bit of insight into this. Um, there's a a guy. He's on. He's on X. And he's also on YouTube. I, I found him from YouTube. Um, his fake name is Jim Browning. That's what he goes by on all the, all the platforms. And he's a scam baiter. This he used to work for Microsoft and a couple other organizations, so he knows you know how to circumvent security and things like that, or yeah, right. lacks security on a lot of these people's networks. And he'll wait. You know he'll gain access to whatever their network is and record their. Um, 
cameras from within their organization, their business, whatever you want to call it, their webcams, microphones, and things like that. And he kept getting dinged by YouTube for the same thing. And their reasoning was, and I mean, it makes sense. It's an open case or an open investigation. And you are not law enforcement. You're obviously providing information to law enforcement. But because this is still an open investigation, they're not guilty yet or whatever. You can't show their face. So he had to go back and take down videos and edit videos. Luckily, YouTube has added a feature where you can do a little bit of stuff like that. You can you can blur faces now on YouTube after you've uploaded the video. So adding tools like that is definitely helpful. But he has tons of videos. He he takes down all these organizations like India and Pakistan and stuff like that. And he kept getting hit for that same reason for showing people's faces. But these are people that are scamming your grandma out of her life savings. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that's why Don um, had to move over to his own website, you know, and, and that's maybe, maybe what I eventually do because, you know, a lot of my videos are going to include faces. I have no choice. I mean, right. so, you know, I just, I'm just going to have to have my website set up where it can handle videos. Yeah. So obviously, if their um, credentials are fake, then you need to show their face to show who they are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that, I mean, the news can get away with it. So what differentiates, you know, an organization yeah. versus a, a reporter? So right. there's a lot of, if you look at like um, the. There's the, probably disclaimers of this is an ongoing investigation that probably, I don't know. That probably at least helps. They, they, you know, the news will name people. Mm -hmm. The news will right, show but, their face. They'll show but the mugshot. We'll say yeah. as well, this is an ongoing investigation. The yeah. North Carolina state police or whatever yeah. are actively investigating, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, just because you're indicted doesn't mean you're guilty yet. You no. know, that kind of thing, yeah. Yeah, I, fucking nightmare. You had a few questions? Yeah. I want to know what's not even the most egregious, but just what was the funniest, dumbest, you know, just, dude, come on. Why are you doing this? Clearly, this started off as maybe a prank, and then people bought into it, and then you capitalized. Like, what is the best story that's not you know, just taking clear advantage of people, I guess. Mm. Um, not real sure. Cause I, I mean, most of the cases I do, if it's things like that, man, I'll let it go. Like there's one, um, that I actually uploaded for a few days and I eventually took it down just because, uh, I realized that there was probably something wrong with the guy. Um, but there was this, and he's at, he was actually, um, they used his, his part of his video in a skit from Comedy Central that they did on our that they did on our website. Um, uh, Tosh did a uh, did a stolen valor skit, and he had this guy in it. His name was Ronnie, and so he was he was claiming to be in the Air Force, and this guy kind of you know confronted him, and, and it was just kind of funny. You have to you have to kind of listen to the you know the the dialogue between the two, but he's like, I've you know, seen it. Yeah. He was like, you, you know, Ronnie, you know, you, you've got, you've got a, a Marine Corps wallet. You've got an air force top and you go faster, but you claim you're a sniper in the army, you know? I mean, so, you know, kind of things like that. But, but I think the guy kind of had some, some mental issues going on. Gotcha. Um, yeah. So, so I kind of, I kind of just did away with that, even though it's still there, like in the Tosh.0 uh, skit that he did. Um, but that was probably, but most of those things I try to avoid, man, because I'm not here to, you know, to hurt people like that. I'm just, I, you know, I mean, if, if I see somebody that's that's blatantly got some mental issues, man, I, yeah, I just say, hey, look, you know, let that shit go. Gotcha. Um, I just I keep imagining the different memes and stuff that have popped up over the years and, you know, just the the goofiest looking people. And now I actually think it's funny because all, all of these, everything has been scraped by AI and search engines and stuff like that over the years. And it, it kind of makes you wonder how much of dot guy who went dumpster diving behind goodwill, piecing together uniform, how many of those images and videos went into training these models what a soldier, what an airman, or what a Marine looks like. So then you end up with that AI generated picture that, um, 
uh, what's his name? Sergeant Major. Um, Ritter. Yeah, no, 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 the other one, the the one that just passed the. I can't think of his name. Goes by uh, uh, assistant assistant to the regional manager on uh, Metro. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So <laughs> that's another funny story. Um, but he he had shared it. It was a Facebook image, and he was like, "I had to see it." So do you, or something along those lines. And it was the the uh, uh, patch, the rank patch had the number nine, and somebody else had a five. And then you see these ones where they have uh, both NCO and officer rank in different places on their uniform and things. So it kind of makes me wonder if that that stuff has helped confuse those models. If that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm sure it has, man. I mean, the, even pre AI, I mean, there was all the, all the memes that were out there. I mean, um, sar- the Sergeant major, the fake Sergeant major that was busted at the funeral. He's a big meme that went around for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the Ranger, you know, he's still out there as a meme. I, I still see his meme pop up a lot. Um, so yeah, I'm sure. I mean, it may be right one of these days. I hope not. It's funnier <laughs> when it doesn't. And plus, yeah. it keeps me making money. Yeah. The faster it takes over my job, the the more it enables people to not pay me. Not that I want to keep doing this forever. I'm actually trying not to do web development anymore. <laughs> but um, so we've talked. Uh, I know you talked about you know where the organization is now and things that you want to do in the future and stuff like that. And I had I keep harassing you and saying you should go nonprofit. Have you made any decisions with any of that? Um, actually I, I you know, I have, um, I'm thinking about doing nonprofit, uh, leaning towards 501 C three. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got several people who want to help with it. Um, grunt style is one grunt style, grunt, grunt style is one. And, you know, I, I, I got to give them props. Grunt style has been one of my biggest supporters. Um, they kept, you know, they kept the website, um, they kept it, they kept everything kind of, you know, for you, for two years while I was gone, they kept everything together for me. Um, and then when I was ready to come back, you know, I went down, had an interview with Tim, Tim Jensen. Um, he's a big supporter. Um, and so, and, and, you know, that's his thought too. He's his thought is, you know, we should do a 501 C three. Um, that way we can, you know, cause I don't get paid for this. Um, I sit around, all, you know, I'm a disabled veteran. So this is what I do all day. I sit around and, and, you know, I hunt new cases. I hunt for stolen valor, I request FOIAs. I, you know, I help family members, you know, find their father, grandfather's two fourteens, um, you know, just different things like that. Um, and, you know, I don't, I don't charge for any of that. I, I never have. Um, I felt like, you know, it's the wrong thing to do. Um, I have had people come to me and try to pay me to do work for them. Mm-hmm. Um, um, different uh, political entities, I would say. Um, have, yeah. Have come to me and said, Hey man, you know, uh, would you do this for us? No, can't do it. You know, um, because, uh, you know, I want to stay nonpartisan because, you know, I want to be able to present the facts to the people, whether it be in politics or not. You know, I want, I want to be able to pro- provide you with unbiased facts so you can look at it. And whether you like it or not, you know, you can make an informed decision off of those facts. Um, and, you know, and if I take your slip, right. now, you're, now you're a leftist or now you're yeah. a MAGA. <laughs> like, and and I, still, I still get called that, you know, <laughs> if, if, if my facts, if my facts don't match up to their narrative, then, you know, you know, for a while I was, I was, a, I was a dim shield. I'm like, dude, I just called out two Republicans like last month, yep. you know, I mean, you know, and, and this month I'm a MAGA because, you know, I'm calling out Tim Waltz. So it's like, you know, I, I call, I, I, I told him, I'm a, I tell him that I got a new name. I'm a MAGA Dem, you know, kind of down the center. I'll just be a MAGA Dem. Yeah. Um, I, but yeah. I mean, I've turned, I've, I've had to turn down some, uh, some, some nice size offers, you know, uh-huh. just, just because I want to keep this, you know, I, I got to keep this mission, you know, what it is, man. It, it's got to be to protect the valor. Uh, of our fallen brothers and sisters mainly, you know, I mean, a lot of people don't understand. I don't say a lot of civilians don't understand what these awards mean. You know, you know what a purple heart is. I do, you know, a lot of people don't, you know, that purple heart, you know, that silver star, 
you know, it may not mean much to a civilian, but to that family member that their husband or, or their sister or their son or their daughter or whoever died earning that award, you know, that little, that little ribbon, that little piece of metal and, 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 and cloth, that's all they got left of their loved one, man. Yeah. You know, and, and to me, that's, that's something we need to protect. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was having a conversation with somebody. I got called. I got called a deployment gatekeeper, and it was because I said that we need the military and the veteran veteran community as a whole needs black and white clear definitions on what things mean. Because in the army, when I was in, a deployment strictly meant Iraq or Afghanistan. You know, going to Korea, going to Italy. Even going to Af or, uh, Africa, you know, we didn't consider that deployment. But the Navy considers any time they're on their boat away from the port a deployment. The Air Force considers Korea a deployment. And so for for one person to say, I was deployed, and you know, Wall said he was deployed, to, deployed but he was in Italy, um, or however he phrased it. But to be able to say that, the civilian population, for one, I'd be like, oh, yeah, he was deployed. And then there's the population that's like, no, it's clear, cut, and dry that it needs to be combat. And then you have people that argue about what combat means. That just happened the other day. Right. If you weren't actively shot at or blown up, there are veterans. That say you, that's not combat. You could be in that theater and just had lucked out and were never engaged in a firefight or anything of any kind. But because you lucked out, you're not a combat veteran. Yeah, and, and I, yeah, and I think that's bullshit, man. We, I agree that that we gatekeep that combat veteran status too much. I mean, you know, at, I did a space on that with uh, Command Sergeant Major Troxel here a while back. Um, yeah, I missed. I tried to get into it, and I yeah. think you did it kind of earlier in the day, and I was busy. Right. Um, you know, j just because you know, I mean, he he's a he's a well well known Sergeant Major. Well, he was a SEAC for nine years, I believe. Um, and you know, coming from he, him who's seen many combat deployments, I said, Sergeant Major, what do you consider a combat deployment? He said, anybody that went overseas and had the chance of either getting shot at or blown up are combat veterans, period. Doesn't matter if you're a cook or a petroleum specialist, water purification, whatever. If you deploy a combat zone, you are a combat veteran. You know, that's why we have these distinguishing badges. We have the CIB, the CIB, the SAR, the, the, the CAR for the Marines. That's why we have those. Those are to distinguish the combat veterans from those that actually seen were engaged by, in combat. Yep. You know, um, but, but of course, because it, if people, when people get into heat, man, and it doesn't fit their narrative, you know, that they want to, that that's when it becomes an issue, you know, um, and some people, some people will take my word for it, and some people will just say, you know, oh, you're a MAGA or you're a Dem, and I'm like, okay, well, whatever. That's the facts. I mean, even the VA and the federal government classifies if you went to Iraq, if you went to Afghanistan, you know, you're a combat veteran. Period. Yep. Yeah i I've seen, and it's kind of funny, but it, at the same time, it's not how disconnected we are, especially with terminology and things like that. It's, you know. You see med pros getting called out. You get Ritter getting called out. You have you getting called out by these people who, I mean, a lot of them are troll accounts to begin with. They just started their account three months ago or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But some of them are people that are just that ill-informed that they're, they'll are they see these words or they'll see these things and they're like, what's that? Or that's not even a real thing. We're like, no shit. It's not a real thing. It's not a real physical thing. Like atropia, right? Like, right. But everybody knows what it is. And she's looking at me with a blank stare because she's like, yeah, I don't know what that is. You've never talked about that before. <laughs> it, it's a fake country training scenario thing. But it basically... Kind of like Pine Land. Yeah, kind of like Pine Land. Yeah, which is Fayetteville. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So... <laughs> Uh, Aaron Provost, if you know who he is, uh, yeah. he used to work for, what was that? Yes, I know it. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, he sells a lot of stuff on call for fire related to it. And I mean, it's just some of the stuff that he comes up with cracks me up. 
I met him a long time ago um, when he was still working at Ranger Up. And that, I mean, Jack Mandeville was still working there. That's how long ago I'm talking about, like a long time ago. Yeah. Tom, Tom Amenta was still there at the time. Oh, they, man. <sighs> oh, hang on. Hang on one second. Get okay. out of here. Sorry, my dog's chasing my cat. Yeah, man. Um, Tom Amenta, believe it or not, man, he was one of my uh, infantry cadre back in the day. I think, I think you mentioned that, but I don't remember what that conversation was. Yeah. Um, okay, you're good. So, while well, he's taking care of his animals, we're we're not the only ones that have to deal with that, by the way. Apparently, um, sorry. <laughs> so there there are maps and things, and you know when you watch movies, things like that, they they'll like they'll actually say Russia or they'll actually say China, but sometimes oh. they don't, but they imply it. Like Top Gun, Top Gun never says Russia or China, but that's who they're implying the entire time. It's always implied that it's Russia or china or, or both um but that's that's the kind of it's the way to get around it without alienating people that currently are your enemies but maybe one day they won't be so maybe you shouldn't say the thing it's a weird ground to be in kind of like what they did with the uh, remake of red dawn yeah yeah which which kind of sucked man the, the original red dawn was great but the, the new one they just screwed it all up I feel like that's been our entire lifetime Hollywood. (laughs) It's very, very hard to come by something unique and actually good because there's unique, but then there's unique, bad, unique, unique with a capital K. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So sorry, we got off off on a tangent there. Um, When you initially started, was it always just you? Did you have you know a team of volunteers? I know uh, uh, not K. When we had him on here a couple weeks ago, uh, he had mentioned that he was coming on to do something periodically or helping out. And I know you were talking about building out a storage solution and stuff. So yeah, yeah. When I originally started, um, I did I did have a couple guys that worked with me. Um, um, and one of the when I started to re- retire temporarily retire. One branched off. Um, he was my special forces guy. Um, he actually runs Guardians of the Green Beret now. Um, okay. And um, so, but right now it's just me. Um, I'm not you have another name for him. <laughs> I'm not saying it oh, out loud. I know, I know, I know. I know. I'm just telepathically giving <laughs> no, it to I, you. Yeah, but you, it yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So um, let's yeah, circle back no. to the end on that one too. Yeah, but uh, yeah, not. I'm I'm br- trying to bring on some people, man. Um, it, it's just. In the kind of work I do, it's kind of hard to find the right type of personality, I guess you could say, because this isn't something that you can just look at and say, OK, yeah, this person stole Valor, boom, let's blast them. You know, so it, it takes months sometimes to do an investigation, you know, right? Because you um, the FOIA request alone takes, what, yeah. four to eight months or yeah, possibly yes. to get anything back? Yeah, FOIA can depend. I mean, because FOIA is depending on who have to FOIA because no organization keeps the you know the marine the NPRC used to keep all the records they don't anymore so um, now I have to FOIA two or three different organizations gotcha um, then I have to do background checks then I have to you know do do my OSINT searches on on the internet and I have to build all this into a case to prove that this person did or did not do what they're claimed what the what they claimed um and a lot of people you know they just want to jump the gun and, and just post and I had that I had that problem when I first started. And so I had to let a couple of people go that they wanted to, you know, they wanted to bulldog it. And I'm like, no, that's not what we're here for. We're, you know, we're not here for quantity here. We're here for quality. We do quality work. The way I look at it is that a case is even once I'm done, I'll look at it and I'll say. If these if I was to take this case and put it in front of 12 peers of mine, would they say this person is guilty? You know, yeah. and 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 if they would, if, if I think they wouldn't, they never get gets posted. But if if I look at it and say, "Yep, twelve people would say this person's guilty," then it gets posted. I think that's fair. Yeah. Um, Veteran Wiki should, can help you out. I can help you out, even if nobody else from Veteran Wiki can. But <laughs> uh, so the technical side, the research side, the finding shit side—that's what I'm very good at. I'm good at computers. And I'm bet I'm very good at finding information. It's his favorite pastime. 
creeping I'm, on people. Not cre- it's not creeping on people. <laughs> it's it's, favorite pastime. Hey, everything that I find is stuff that's publicly available. I don't yeah, even go I mean, so far as having to FOIA anything. It's just literally what I can find publicly, what you posted, what's been posted about you, what search engines and stuff have indexed. It's not that difficult. Sounds like Andrew is volunteering. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I I will I will volunteer on the the front end as, or I should say, the back end, not the front end. You know, gra- gathering mm-hmm. information, putting stuff together, but putting the pieces together, doing the crazy, you know, drawing all the red lines between documents and images. And st- I can't do that part. I can find all the information, give you the packet, and then I'm sorry, but it's not organized. But it's all here. No. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's what I'm leaning towards. I mean, cause you know, it, like I said, I've only been back for almost two years now and the case, the case loaded again, I, I, I knew it would be. Um, and so uh, I'm definitely going to need a team. And originally when I first started, I was using, um, trying to think of the name of, uh, the case management system. Uh, my case is what it was called. And basically I could build a case in this system um, and it was remote and I could have other people that were working that case, upload documents, you know, add notes, whatever. But um, they've become so expensive, man. I mean, just to add a user is like an extra hundred bucks a month. And wow. it's like, it's like, yeah. you no, know, I can't afford that. Right. So a lot of, a lot of these, I don't know how much you've used any sort of project management software or anything like that recently, but everybody has kind of been become everything if that makes sense. Like nobody's like, nobody's really good at, you know, Kanban boards and nobody's really good at project tracking. Just everybody does everything. Sorry. We've got. Now it's our animals. (laughs) I'm going to mute this real quick so I can tell the dogs to chill. All right. Sorry about that. So we're in the front of the, of the house and the windows facing the street. So when the dogs see the mailman, yeah. They have to let us know they saw the mailman. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Um, I completely lost my train of thought. You were talking, talking about project management. Oh, yeah, yeah, software. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's why I asked you that kind of two-part question to you asking, you know, what's a good solution for this? Because we, we run a NAS here in the house um, that has basically hybrid abilities. Part of it's accessible from the World Wide Web, but the other part is only accessible on our network here in the house. Right. And so having something like that, and there's a a software package called Docker, and anybody that makes any piece of software, typically they'll make, you know, they might make a Windows version or a Linux version or a Mac version, but they also make a Docker version, and Docker works on everything. Think of it like a uh, you know, like a sandbox where you can test and play and everything kind of works. So you can load it up, you can throw Docker on a Mac or you can throw Docker on Linux or whatever. I think that, you know, having that, and then you have physical, you know, access control because it's on prem with you, but then you also have software and authentication level access control and all the logs. So if somebody's like, Oh, uh, I didn't do that or whatever. I downloaded something or whatever. And, a uh, file's missing. You can look at the logs, and it might be true that they didn't do it, but somebody that has access to their computer did do it. And that's big for. I, I run into this with my clients all the time. They're like, something happened on my website. I'm like, okay, like I haven't done anything. So I'll be like, all right, let me pull everything up. I pull up, you know, the logs and the IP addresses and all the actions that were taken. I'm like, somebody definitely has access to your computer. Yes. I'm not saying that it's you, but it's either you or you have other problems. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, well, you know, what should I do? And they start kind of backpedaling, you know, oh, well, I don't think anybody has access to my computer, you know, cause that would mean that they have access to my bank accounts and my customers' bank accounts. And yeah, and then when yeah. you put that on them, they're like, you know what, maybe I did hit the, the delete button. Can you just restore that for me? Can you make that? <laughs> right. So, yeah, and cause they, they always want to jump down my throat, right? Like, well, my website's down, I'm like, Okay. So what did you do? Yeah. What did you do? <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah, but, you know, having something like that, I, I definitely understand why staying away from a cloud solution. They all do offer like HIPAA, high tech, PCI compliance, stuff like that. But as we've all seen, 
time and time again. Hack, hack, hack. And, yeah. you know, data breaches of other guys, you know, just somebody was dumb enough to leave their password on a sticky note and their house was robbed. And now Google's down. <laughs> just, yeah. Google's down. It's, it's like stuff like that has weirder stuff has happened. Somebody's gotten like a password for an ATT employee. And because the different access controls, somebody might have ticked the wrong check mark. And this field worker who just, you know, runs the line to your house has access to the entire controls for a data center. Somebody hacks or brute forces their account and they get in there and they flick a switch. And now the entire internet is down for the country. Right. It's, it's always something dumb. It's either something really sophisticated or something so dumb like that. There's yeah. not really much in between. Yeah. But you know, that gives you at least the ability to say it's physically here. I'm not just distributing it to everybody. It's not going to get leaked because nobody has access because you can lock it down a lot better, especially when it's in your house, putting it behind firewall and different applications and stuff. And then if somebody within your organization does something malicious, all, you all, would they, know exactly yeah, all they've done is given yeah. you the evidence to help <laughs> make a case against them. And you're the expert. Right. Yeah. I mean, cause you know, I deal with a lot of PII, e yep. even though, you know, when I do FOIAs, um, they don't have the PI on it. I mean, a lot of veterans just, you know, especially over the last couple of weeks, man, with, with everything that's been happening, yep. I bet I've had probably 30 veterans say, hey, up front, just shoot me their, they shot me their DD-214 to my inbox and say, hey, if anybody ever has any questions here, you have my shit. You know, um, Dan Burkhoff was one. Um, he he is a uh, former Navy SEAL and he runs Vote Vets, which is, you know, uh, a Democratic ran mm -hmm. um, organization and a lot of people were calling him out man saying oh he didn't do what he did and so he reached out to me he's like hey man if i send you my documents you know will you verify me so these people get off my ass i'm like sure so he sent me his 214 he sent me his you know his marine corps sniper training certificates you know he sent me his his valor awards because people were saying oh you you weren't a seal you know you you weren't in the battle of fallujah you know but boom there it all was you know um and so when, when, when guys like him send me their, their personal information, I want to make sure I keep their shit secure you yeah. know, because they, they've trusted me with it. Um, right. and I, I want to make sure I can keep it secure. Do you, and this, no, never mind. I'm not going to ask you this question because I, I would put you in a tough spot and I don't want to do that to you. Um, the, the process that you go through, obviously the timeline can, can vary simply from FOIA requests alone. Um, but how frequently do you see that there are actually errors on the DOD or VA side? Like where people legitimately are like, dude, this really happened to me or I really have this thing, but the line on a document in their actual C file or something like that is just worded, you know, one way where it's arbitrary and it could be interpreted one way or the other. Like is, is that pretty frequent or? Um, I wouldn't say it's frequent, but it does happen. Um, uh, awards being left off of 214s. I mean, I, I try to tell people all the time, you know, you know, it, everybody knows when you're, when you're ready to get out of the military, man, you're ready to go. You know, you, 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 you're ready to get that 214 and walk. Um, but you're, you know, you're or the keeper of your own awards. You know, that's why they tell you make a me book, you know, keep all your shit together. You know, one example was, was uh, Congressman Nails when I went after him for a CIB, which, you know, he rightfully, which rightfully so, he did not have. Um, his records only listed one Bronze Star. Um, and so I said, hey, you know, what about this Bronze Star? You know, um, you know you, you're claiming two, but there's only one. No. Well, he had, he had the paperwork. He said, here's my paperwork for my second Bronze Star. And it was legit. And I told him, I said, well, here's, this is what you need to do. You need to take that, submit that paperwork to DOD and have it added to your records because it's not in your OMPF. And it's not on your 214. So, so according to the military, as of now, you only have one, even though you got paperwork showing you have two. Yeah. Um, so that's, if he if he went done that, I, I'm not sure if he did or not. But that's um, that's an instance of, you know, you've gotten away with, you 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 steal the candy bar and now you want to hold up a bank. Like you've gotten away with the little things for so long that you think that you're untouchable. And he kind of got Troy Nell's kind of got that way. He was wearing and it's it's a technicality but it is how the award is uh given out right. and it was just because he didn't have the mos required 
the job, the training. He well, he had the training. He reclassed before that, right? Well, year, years before. Yeah, Ooh. I mean, he, he enlisted as eleven, but then he went out, went into uh, he got then he got, got commissioned and he re, he branched two or three different times. Um, he already had the calf for two thousand five, um, and so the CIB that he was awarded for two thousand eight was erroneously awarded, and he knew that. I mean, he he was he was civil affairs. Civil affairs don't get CIBs, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and so, and that's what I was wondering, and that's why it took so long to do the investigation. Because so I'm like, okay, well, who awarded him the CIB? So I reached out. I, I got a copy of the award letter, and I re, I found I actually found the guy in the signature block who was actually a history teacher in Texas now, and I emailed wow. him. I said, hey brother, um, were you deployed with Congressman Troy Nails on this mission? Blah blah blah. He's like, yep, that was me. I was his S one. I was like, I sent him. I sent him that letter. I said, did you sign this? He said, absolutely not. He said, I was on leave. He said, that is not my signature. I do not know who signed it. He said, and from what I from what I know, nobody in my S1 shop would have signed it because they know he wasn't eligible for that award. So there's still that question as to who signed off on his on that award for him. You yeah. know, gotcha. the S1 claims he didn't do it. I mean. That's so, wild. Yeah. But I mean, he did take it off. So it, t- it took him a long time. It yeah. took. I, you you're on every single one of his tweets. Every every day he tweet, man, I'd be right there under him. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And he all it was was because he wouldn't take a lapel pin off of his suit. Mm, the male ego. Yes, yes, yes. When you get when you get caught in something small like that, the best course of action is to correct yourself as fast as possible because it's going to gain steam and it's going to get worse. I told him that. I told. The day, the day, the day I brought it out, and I tagged Nails. His chief of staff called me, and he said, "Look, dude, I asked around the office about you. You know, he said everybody says you're a good guy. You're straight down the middle. You know, you've got, you know, you've got this history, and you know. So, what is this all about?" And I even explained it to him. I said, "Look, man, he he does not have this award." And he's like, "Well, he's not in the office right now, but I'll talk to him. Tell him I talked to you, and we'll get it resolved." Two months went by, man, before he finally took it off. You know, so. Um, you know, and, and he, he even um, he even tried to send the congressional letter to the Pentagon to say, hey, why'd you take my CIB? And they responded back because you didn't earn it. You know, I mean, <laughs> Jeez. But, so I said, if he would have came, yeah. came out and just said, sorry, guys, you know, my bad, you know, I'm taking it off and put the CAB on, man. There's a lot of guys out there with a CAB, but they would have loved to sink Congress and nails. Wearing the badge they earned, you yeah. know, I mean, no big deal. Take the CAB off, put your CAB on. We're good to go. You know, I think he would have gained more support by doing that. Yeah. <laughs> you you always obviously see these things in you know twenty twenty in hindsight, whatever. But it just really makes you wonder why they think it's worth it to dig in, unless that's the intent. Because obviously, uh, was it? Uh, no bad publicity. Yeah, no. no. This is yeah. definitely bad publicity, and in politics, yeah. bad publicity is bad publicity. I don't know. This Politicians is... don't seem to care about anything. <laughs> you but, want to be electable, but the country is so divided that they can find an issue at every turn to carve out the fifty percent that they want to vote for them. Yeah. We're definitely divided right now. That's for sure, man. It's, 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 it's worse than I've ever seen it, man. I mean, you know, you prevent some, you prevent some, present somebody with a fact and they're going to do everything they can to deny that fact. You know, I mean, it's like, dude, it's right here, black and white. Look, 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 you know, believe your eyes, you know, I mean, literally in the middle of a fight with my mom (laughs) regarding the Aurora, Colorado issue. So I've got a, I've got a, a guy that's uh, a friend of mine, that former group guy that lives out there, and he went riding around, was taking videos and stuff, and she was like, can we talk to your buddy on the podcast? I want to ask him some questions. So that's uh, what we're doing on Wednesday. We were going to do it yesterday, but we're doing it on Wednesday now. And uh, the videos even that he just posted on Facebook were like eerie. It was kind of you know, like when you think of like the ghetto and stuff like that, there's always right. like, there's still kids out doing stuff. There's still dogs. There's still people are playing basketball or whatever. 
you know, walking around, there's people doing whatever. But this was like weird. It was like a ghost town, but just trash and shit everywhere. And not a place that I want to go. Yeah. Oh, anyways, <laughs> yeah. If you could teach our viewers anything, what would you teach them? If I could teach them anything, it would be do not use stolen valor as a weapon. You know, the, the stolen valor is, is you know, it, it should only be used when necessary. You know, it, just because me and you differ on opinions, you know, we're both veterans, you know, um, just because, you know, I like this guy that's running and, and you don't, that doesn't make me stolen valor. You know, um, it, it, we're taking it and we're really, we're really diminishing what, you know, what, what valor is, what honor is when we do that kind of thing. Um, you know, it, it's like, it's like their backup now. If they don't have, if they don't have a fact to stand on, then they're going to throw the stolen valor, you know, thing out there. You know, I, I get tagged so much in political battles and I'm like, guys, please stop tagging me in your political battles. You know, I mean, you know, just because the guy, you know, wants to vote for Trump or he wants to vote for, for Kamala, for Kamala, whatever. I mean, it, that doesn't make, that doesn't mean they're stolen valor. You know, I mean, don't you remember being in the military the military is a freaking melting pot, man. I mean, yep. you know, we're, we're from everywhere. We're from every every part of life. We're different religions, different colors, different backgrounds. I mean, you know, we're just we saw we saw we, eye to eye we're in the military when we're overseas. I wish we could do the same here. You know, I mean, you know, if, if the veteran community could pull together like we do when we're deployed or when we're in a combat zone, man, we would be a force to be reckoned with, you know. I mean, we could make some change in this world, you know, I, I, even 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 with the, some of the bigger military uh, uh, community. Uh, what do you want to call it? Entrepreneurs, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, I would like to see them come together. You know, I mean, it, this isn't about, you know, uh, you know I want to I want to you know, be bigger in the military community than you, you know, or, or whatever. We need to come together for the community. You know, I mean if these big companies that, that, that support veterans would all come together for a common cause, man, we could accomplish so much. It, you know, it, it's just, we, it's an ego. Like she said, it's an ego thing with, with, with a lot of guys, you know, we let our egos get in our way. We really do. So, so talking about grunt style stuff for a second. Um, Cause I've known Nick Palmashano since Oh nine. Yeah. And, uh, when uh, they had an issue with ground style, I, I, Nick, Nick had told me some stories. So I'm kind of blurring things that I know like publicly versus things that Nick told me just like at lunch. Right. Um, but some of it was specifically around like them stealing designs or copying designs that were really, really close. And so he kind of created a hatred among people that were brand loyal to Ranger Up, and it was like these guys are terrible, whatever, bad culture. And right around that same time, uh, Article Fifteen was starting. Right, JP and those guys had started that company before you know Black Rifle, and they had an old Ranger Up had an old design that JT like wanted to redo or do something similar, and he reached out to Nick and asked him for permission. Mm -hmm. So it made the whole thing even bigger. Like, look, right. Rifle, no, blah blah blah, they're terrible and this and that and then in the in the waning years of ranger up after he and tim squandered that company nick was like oh yeah we're uh i'm going to hang out with tim jensen we're doing this and do i'm like you're what like you you convinced a big portion of the community to dislike this guy and that organization and you're just like oh well you know what now i'm a little bit older a little bit wiser dude you you are part of the problem. If you just wouldn't have anything, kept that in house and let their brand grow, you probably would have had, you know, something might have come of it. They might have apologized right. or whatever, however you want to happen. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, me, me and Nick are friends. I mean, Ranger up. Um, like I said, Tom, uh, him and him and Tom uh, recently started Ranger up, mm -hmm. and Tom was my was one of my infantry cadre, and when I deployed he would send me Ranger up stuff, you know, to pass out to the guys. Um, and so when I got back and I started stolen valor, um, that's when I met Nick. Um, and you know, they wanted to do shirts for us. Um, and grunt style started up at the same time. 
Um, and Alaric wanted to do shirts for us as well. Um, and so, you know, I kind of let both of them do it. Um, and, and I think, I think you're right, you know, and then of course, JT, um, me and him go way back to, uh, me and he used to run admin, some case, uh, some pages on Facebook, Facebook to put it together, but with article 15 clothing, you know, um, it was, they were all fighting for that one space, you know, that, that yep. one spot in the military community. And, and I think it created a rift there. Um, and I really wish all those guys could, could just do away with that rift, you know, black rifle as well, man. If, if all those guys could pull together, you know, with the assets they have and the following they have, if they could just say, Hey man, you know, fuck the bullshit. We need, we need to pull together for veterans, you know, Dude, the changes they could make, political, e even in the political arena, man, with, with the massive amount. I was of, just thinking in VA in general, yeah. like turning around the VA. Right. I mean, they, they, they could, I mean, you know, I, I haven't spoken to Black Rifle in a while. Um, I, like I said, I just came back on the scene recently. Um, I've, talking, I've talked to Tim, me and him talk often. Um, he's doing good things as far as the veteran community goes, I know of, you know, with the, with the foundation he just started. Um, he helped with the PAC Act, getting it passed. Um, you know, I see Nick doing good things with, with, uh, you know, this Afghan rescue missions and, you know, things like that. And, you know, I just, I just, I really do wish the veteran community could put, you know, their, their, their egos, you know, just put their egos aside and pull together for a common cause, man. Like, you know, if, if, if those guys were overseas in the ditch in fucking Afghanistan, they'd pull together to save each other's asses. You know what I mean? Yep. You know, and, and I think if they could get in that mindset and, and do that now. I think we could, you know, I think they could, you know, they could bring it's it. It's funny that you say that because I have quite literally said, take the motto, no left or nobody left behind. Whereas over here in the States, it's every man for himself. Yeah. And it's just, where is the disconnect? Right. The, well, there, the whole community is, I mean, I used to contract for, for uh drinking bros and worked for Nick and, no JT and uh, like literally I've had drinks with them here in Wilmington where I live. And, uh, the things that people say behind closed doors. And I used to, and I actually realized this after some years with Nick is he puts a lot of trust in the information that he gives people, but not necessarily like in a good way. It's like, he's testing you. And that always annoyed me. I'm like, dude, why are you telling me this? Like, this is some gossipy type stuff. And yeah, like it's important and it's going to sway my opinion and stuff. But why? Right. Why are you whispering this information in my ear? And I mean, all of them, everybody that I've been around, everybody's had, oh, yeah, they're a great guy. And they're like, well, you know what? That one time you did this, this, and I'm like, dude. Just if you're if you don't have a positive opinion about somebody, just don't talk about them at all. Just yeah. don't say, "Oh, they're a good guy," and then to grab three people and be like, "No, he's not." Just, just don't fucking talk about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's yeah. looking at me because I already got in trouble once this year, but. <laughs> um. But yeah, it's the 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 community as a whole struggles to find like a common i guess we'll call it an anchor like yeah. one organization that everybody can rally around and right now black rifle it's like every time i interact with justin or something like, oh fuck black rifle they suck they left veterans behind like you make black rifle not want to help anybody because all everybody does is get they do the most for a lot of organizations currently but when every turn they're just being bashed like yeah, and I think that's got a lot to do with misinformation, man, and 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 that's what I hate too. You know, misinformation, disinformation, whatever. You know, um, I I think a lot of the stuff with the black rifle came from, you know, them saying that they they donated to the Democrats or they donated to this person or that person. You know, um, so what? You know, I mean, if, if they're doing good things for veterans, let them do what they do. You know, I mean, nobody's out here trying to take our guns. You know, nobody's coming to my front door taking my AR-15. You know, so you know, I think I think that's what gets pushed a lot. You know, people are people are like, "Well, my rights, my rights." Yeah, you, your rights, but you know, there's nobody going to show up at your front door tomorrow and take your AR-15. Of course, unless you're a threat to yourself or someone else. But yeah. I mean, 
you know, and, and I think it just gets taken. And unfortunately, that affects the community as a whole and it affects, you know, pulling together and and really doing some good that, that I think, you know, could come out of all of this. I think you just need to start. You need to be the one to helm the reincarnation of the VFW. Yeah. <laughs> just, hey, I, I'm, I actually posted something about that last night, man. I, I was like, you know what? Because I see when I post stuff up on my on my page about, you know, a politician or whatever, when I've looked into the records, I mean, the comments, you know, they're just in there. I mean, it, they're just in there bashing each other. Yep. You know, and I'm like, and and, and it's all veterans. And I'm like, man, these, these people need a place to go where they can fucking blow off some steam yep. and, you know, just fuck out. Um, uh, and, and so I posed the question. I said, hey, what, what do we have like a space, you know, once a month, every two weeks, whatever, call it a day room, you know, because that's, that's where everybody went in, in the army to mm-hmm. chill out. And we all just come together and we talk about, What's on everybody's mind that day? You know, uh, what, what what's the issues that are bothering you? Leave the politics out. Just come in. Hey, man, you know, what's on your mind? What do you need to talk about? Well, let's talk about it. You know, maybe even bring in some subject matter experts on some of this stuff. And, you know, and 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 try to, you know, try to let these guys be heard. I mean, I think they need a, they need a mission. They need to be heard. Um, and I think they're not being heard. And so they, they, they get in the comments and they just bash each other. Right. Um. You should get with Justin on that because I don't know if you know what he does for Black Rifle, but he had started a a fan club on Facebook that was originally named after Richard Ryan's what was Full Mag Richard Ryan's show or channel on YouTube? I think it was Full Mag, and it was like Full Mag Coffee Club or something like that, and then it was changed to like Black Rifle Fan Club, and then Black Rifle had approached him originally and said hey you have to change your name like that's our trademark <laughs> brand and then they ended up coming back and rebranding as the spearhead by black rifle and there's like 30 35,000 people in that group damn yeah and that's only five or six years old so he's he's now employed by black rifle but that's still his group if at any point in time they were to fire him they also lose that group i had a whole conversation asking like how's that going to work and he's like no, we wrote it into my contract that if anything were to happen, this is still my group and I'm, I take it with me. You don't keep it. So smart. It was a good move. Yeah. Most people don't think to do something like that. Yeah. Get, get with him um, about like community moderation. Cause he can get you a, you know, like a small initial pool outside of just the people on X to come in and join, you know, obviously people don't like to jump platform people that are on, religiously on Facebook don't like to come to X and people religiously on X don't want to be on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I get on Facebook sometimes, man, but just face Facebook is, is so much, so full of spam now, man. And, and just fake, fake accounts. You know, I mean, it, it's just, I, I hardly even get on it anymore. It It's kind of funny that you say that because it just made me think that the anonymity of Twitter has made Twitter, the more real place. The people showing because images, I mean, are they're still there and video still there on Twitter, but it's not you don't feel like every single time you post, you have to post an image with it or a video with it. Whereas on Facebook, I'm probably the only person that writes a sentence. Everybody's just uploading pictures or videos and saying, I did this cool thing. Look yeah. at me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Or fake freaking AI photos of soldiers saying happy birthday. Yeah. <laughs> or why can't why can't pictures like this ever trend? They're right. Heroes. <laughs> uh because you're baiting people and you're gonna turn this into a porn page. Yeah. Pretty much. Yep. People are dumb enough to fall for well, I mean, they already have the the grandpas and stuff like that that are already following those people anyways, because they can't tell the difference. What is what is the difference to them? They're never going to meet these people. What does it matter if it's fake or real? Right. Well. Yeah. Well. Well. Do you have any final questions for him? What would you say was the most difficult case to work on, if if you can even talk about it? 
Um, as far as difficulty in investigating it, um, I guess maybe like any, even if it had like some emotional investment, just something that just made it a, a bigger hurdle than it normally is. Um, I would have to say that would be the the Kelsey Hoover case. Um, and, and that one was because she changed identity so much that it was hard to keep track of her. Um, it, it all began with um, someone sent me a video of her in the airport in a lieutenant's uniform, U.S. Army uniform. Um, and um, she was trying to get a seat upgrade on the plane basically and pretending to be a soldier. Yeah. Well, um, the, they sent me the video. And, and so, um, and, and in the video, she actually showed him a picture of, of her driver's license. Um, and so I started doing an investigation and come to find out that in the, in the video, she took, she told him her, that her name was Michael Cipriani. Um, and she looked like a guy. She told, she totally did. Um, so I started her the investigation on her. And it just turned into this big, I mean, two year wild investigation of chasing this girl around the United States. Um, ended up finding her finally in Nevada, um, where she was going by the alias Michael Cipriani, was still pretending to be a man. Um, she'd gotten a job as a substitute teacher at a local school. Um, and she was showing up at this school in a wheelchair. And so I reached out to the school resource officer and I'm like, hey, uh, does this, does this guy work there? And um, he's like, yeah, yeah. And, you know, he's just like, I go out there every day and, and, and help him get out of the car and, and help him get him in his wheelchair. And I'm like, really? Well, what's, you know, what's his story? Oh, he told me he got shot in the back in Afghanistan. I was like, really? Um, also had purple heart license plates. Um, and so I put the story up on my website with all the information. It was like a two year investigation of where she'd used different identities where she was now in Nevada. And um, so I had some uh, uh, local, the local DA in Nevada reached out to me, seen the story and said, Hey man, send me what you got. Uh, we're, we're looking into this. Um, so they ended up prosecuting her um, and they actually used the video off of my YouTube channel in the courtroom. Oh, wow. And the judge sent it when he sent it, sir, he said, um, he looked at her and he said, you know, he said, there's some crimes I don't like. He said, but this crime is more egregious. He said, because you are pretending to be, you are pretending to be a soldier, someone that was wounded in Afghanistan. He said, and to me, that's one of the most, most egregious crimes you commit. And they, and, um, they charged her with burglary, which was weird. I never heard that before. They charged her with burglary because she went into the DMV with a fake 214 uh -huh. to get a court license plate. So they basically charged her with burglarizing the DMV. Um, and he threw the book at her, man. He gave her 20 years. Wow. Um, yeah. A minimum of seven years served and she would have to, um, be on probation, probation after that seven years. Wow. That's, That's crazy. Wild. Yeah. It, it was that, that was one of the longest and because it, it was just, it was mind blowing because, you know, it, it, she was even sending me messages <laughs> as Kipriani claiming that, you know, she was who she was or he was who she was trying to throw me off her trail, you know? Um, but yeah, we, we ended up, we ended up busting her. And just to be clear, not trans, a woman pretending to she, be she was a woman trying to, she, what she told the judge is she was, she was confused about her identity is what she told the judge. Cause the judge asked her, well, why are you trying to, cause, cause she had actually went and tried to get her name changed legally from Kelsey Hoover to Michael Cipriani, but they denied it. Not sure why. Um, she told the judge that she wasn't sure if she was a man or a woman. Um, so I'm guessing, no, she wasn't trans. She was just confused. Gotcha. Interesting. <laughs> People, man. The, the more ridiculous and elaborate they can get. And then you also have the, um, uh, it was classified. You're not going to find. You're not going to find out it was classified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was class, my, my records are classified. I'm like, dude, you're not. Your records aren't classified. Navy SEALs aren't classified. I mean, I get Navy SEAL records all day. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and that's why a lot of people like to claim Navy SEAL or Special Forces or, or CAG or something of that sort because they think you know, oh, their records are classified. Mm -hmm. No, the, the only thing that's classified when you're a Navy SEAL 
is your name when you're actually selected and you become a member of the teams. Then you become classified, your name, you know. Um, but they, they don't understand that. That's why they don't understand how Don Chipley can just get on his computer and type in their name and find out if they were attended buds, you know. Um, oh, I can smell the homemade meatballs that I have on the stove, and I am genuinely starting to stress <laughs> there. Okay. At the All past right. point. So yeah, you gotta rush us. We're having I've, great conversation. I've been, I've been trying to telepathically tell you that because how can you not smell them? I don't know. I didn't think I checked them so bad. <laughs> well, Anthony, um, it's been great having you on. Hopefully, you know, we can do this again in the future. Um, I'm definitely willing to help you out where I can. Yeah, and as soon as we stop recording, you're gonna pass on that name for the special forces. And then I'll I'll give you the oh, name yeah. later oh. later for the Navy um, SEAL. So I have a, a buddy that used to work for the VA. He's actually working on my case right now. That's how I learned how ridiculous it is to even FOIA yourself. Um, yep. but and the only reason why I know it. He's a, a former Marine. Uh, used to work for the VA. It was a VRNE counselor, South Bend, and uh, he is the detail oriented kind of person that and. He's also conveniently not doing anything right now. So um, I'll, uh, I'll pass along his information to you and uh, I'll let him know as well. If you wanted to reach out to him, see if he might be interested. He, he is uh, on uh, with the organization for with Veteran Wiki. He was going to be our laws and regulations and everything guy. He was going to type it all out and you know find all the information. So might was? be. No, I mean, he still is, but just because you know, we're kind of disorganized right now. Fixing that. Yeah. Are you looking to get on a board? Yeah, we do need more board members. Uh, I'm not sure about that now. All right, right now, I got a, yeah. I got a plate full for sure. She's trying to get off of it. That's what it's really about. Please take my spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, uh, appreciate you coming on, and uh, hopefully next time we have you on, we'll have something um, a little bit more lighthearted and less. Maybe maybe some people will do some stolen valor for good, in in some way. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. How to do that, in what world would that be know. for good? What? There's weirder <laughs> things have happened. Weird, weirder okay. things have happened. On that note, yeah. <laughs> thank you. We genuinely yes. appreciate yeah. your time. Thank and you're yes. apparently oh, going yeah. blind over there. So yeah, yeah. 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 I, I, I there. started seeing the sun going across. Yeah, I was like, and we we're at the one hour mark too. And I was like, <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> I'm Do you a, not see he's hurting? I'm a good social person. Oh, my gosh. All right. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks, Anthony. Yeah. Thank you, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Yep.